Today we are going to go over solving basic linear equations and there's an Alex assignment on that. Therefore, we're going to start with this equation 2x equals 26. So the question is going to ask, are 12, 13, or 14 solutions, yes or no? So that's how the question is going to look, is just like that. So you can do this a couple different ways. One is you could just simply plug in 12 for x, 13 for x, and 14 for x. So 2 times 12 is, and the answer is obviously 24. 2 times 13 is 26. You can use a calculator for those if you don't know those. And 2 times 14 is 28. So then you just compare and say, hey, is it a solution then? Well, it needed to equal 26. Which one of those equals 26? Well, obviously the first one doesn't. The second one does, and the third one doesn't. So I would write, I would mark no, yes, no. So that's one way to do that question. I'll show you another way as we get to the next type that is similar to this one. All right, the next question is going to be pretty easy. It's just going to say that. Negative 5 plus x equals 12. This is just a one-step equation. You're just trying to get the x by itself. The key is when adding or subtracting, use the opposite sign of the numeric value. So instead of add, uh, subtracting 5, I've got to do the opposite of subtracting 5 to get the x by itself. So the goal is to get the x by itself. You do that by using the opposite sign when we're adding or subtracting in a linear equation. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. That gives us x equals 17. Fairly easy. Now we're going to move on to some fraction questions. These are a little bit harder. So this one's going to say x minus 3 tenths equals negative 2 fifths. So I use the same principle I used on the last question. I'm going to use the opposite of negative 3 tenths, which is plus 3 tenths, and I'm going to add that to both sides. The problem is, is when I have negative 2 fifths plus 3 tenths, you must have a common denominator. I'm going to say that again. You must have a common denominator in order to add or subtract fractions. So therefore, I need times the bottom, 5, by whatever it needs to be t multiplied by to make 10. You always multiply the smaller one to make the bigger one. Sometimes you'll have to multiply both of them. For example, if it was, say, 10 and 8, your common denominator would be 40. So you'd have to times the 8 by 5 and the 10 by 4. But in this case, we're only going to have to multiply the 5 to make the common denominator of 10. What do we multiply 5 by to make 10? Well, you multiply it by 2. So therefore, 2 times 5 will be 10. But if I times the bottom by 2, you have to do the same thing to the top. Let me say that again. You must multiply whatever you do to the bottom also to the top of the fraction. Therefore, you end up with negative 4 tenths, because 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and 2 times 5 is 10. So you end up with negative 4 tenths plus 3 tenths. Notice how the denominators are exactly the same now. Now we simply add straight across. So negative or subtract straight across. Negative 4 plus 3, think about that going negative 4 on the number line, then coming back to plus 3, that's going to put you at negative 1 tenth. Okay, moving on. This question is a little bit hard to see what it actually was to start with, but it was 3 sevenths x equals 18. 3 sevenths x equals 18. So the question here is, how do I get that x by itself? Notice this last question had a minus 3 tenths, but this one is 3 sevenths x. There's no plus or minus between the 3 sevenths and the x, if you'll notice. There's no plus or minus right there. So if there's no plus or minus, it's multiplying. So how do we get rid of multiplying by 3 sevenths? Well, a lot of people would say, well, you divide by 3 sevenths, which is true, but dividing by 3 sevenths, you really can't divide fractions. So you flip and multiply. I always say flip in times. How many flip in times do I have to tell you how to get the x by itself when there's a fraction in front? And all you do is flip and times. So that's called multiplying by the reciprocal. So you just flip in times, the sevens, notice, will divide each other out. 
and the threes will divide each other out. So now all that's left on that left side is an x, which is good. But if I multiply this side by 7 thirds, I've got to multiply the other side by 7 thirds. Now here I'm going to put the 18 over 1. The 3 divides into the 18. So if there's anything that will divide out a number before you multiply it, it makes your life easier. So take 3 into 18. 3 divides 18 how many times? 6 times. So the 3 divides itself out once, and then 3 divides 18 out 6 times. Now I have 6 times 7, which is 42. x equals 42. All right? Next type of problem. This is where we just have a number in front. It's just going to say 4x equals 42. Okay? Now this one you're going to divide both sides by 4 obviously, to get the x by itself, because 4x just means 4 multiplied by x, so I'm just going to divide both sides by 4. Now I have x equals 42 fourths, but 42 fourths will reduce. 2 goes into 42, 2 goes into 4. So it reduces to 21 halves, and then I can turn that improper fraction into a mixed number just by dividing 2 into 21. 2 into 21 goes 10 times with 1 left over, so you have to remember that remainder type thing that you learned in first, second grade. So 2 goes into 21 10 times with 1 left over. So you're going to end up with 10 and 1 half. Okay, the 2 will stay there as the denominator. So you can write it either way, 21 halves or 10 and 1 half as a mixed number. So 10 and 1 half is what we call mixed. And the 21 halves is what we call an improper fraction. Okay? Last two types here. So this one's going to say 31 equals 1 minus 6x. Now I just get the x by itself. Now this is a two-step because you have to get rid of what's being added or subtracted and you have to get rid of what's being multiplied to the x. A lot of people think that the 6 is being subtracted from the x. It is not. The 1 is actually being added to the x, and the negative 6 is being multiplied to the x. Because notice the negative 6 and the x are right next to each other. There's no plus or minus between them. So therefore, I need to subtract 1. Always get rid of addition and subtraction first. I'm going to say that again. Always get rid of addition and subtraction first, then get rid of the multiplication or the fraction in front of the, num uh, in front of the variable. So I'm going to get rid of the addition or subtraction first. So I have a positive 1. How do I get rid of a positive 1? I subtract 1, both sides. And that ends up with 30 equals negative 6x. Now see the negative 6x, again, the negative 6 is multiplying. How do I get rid of multiply? You divide. You always do the opposite or what we call the inverse operation. So we divide both sides by negative 6. 30 by, divided by negative 6 is negative 5. Now the question I actually asked, is the following, are the following, I should say, solutions. Is 5 a solution? Is 6 a solution? Is negative 5 a solution? Is 6, negative 6 a solution? I could have started with this equation right here and plugged in 4x, 5, 6, negative 5, negative 6. Just substituted them, figured out whether they equaled 31 or not. That's what I did up in this top one. But in this case, I think it's 10 times easier just to solve it and know that there is only one solution for this. There's only one number that is going to, when I plug it in, give me 31. Notice if I plug in negative 5 times negative 6, negative times negative is a positive 30, plus 1 will be 31. And that's the only one that will work through that, is negative 5. So over here, it's 10 times easier just to say no... No, yes, no. The only one that's going to work is negative 5. Going to the last type of problem, again, multi-step problem. You're going to have this 3x minus 17 equals 11 here at the bottom. And I want to think about that. All right, how am I going to get this the x by itself? What two things are on the same side as the x? Well, in this case, there's a negative 17 and there's a 3. Then I have to ask myself, which one is being added or subtracted? In this case, the negative 17 is being added or subtracted. The 3 is being multiplied to the x. So again, the first step is to get rid of whatever is being added or subtracted. So I'm going to get rid of the negative 17 by adding 17. Again, you do the opposite. Add 17 to both sides. Don't do it to just one side. Do it to both sides of the equation. 
That's going to give me 3x equals 28. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and x will just equal 28 thirds, which is 9 and 1 third. Okay? Those are the type of questions you will see on the Alex assignment for this week. You only have one Alex assignment this week, but please make up any Alex assignments you haven't finished. Again, all Alex assignments are going to be due by April 30th. That's the due date. You have to finish your Alex assignments by April 30th. So please get on Alex and do this assignment and finish your other assignments, including the scheduled knowledge check. I think if you don't do the knowledge check, it'll be hard to do this assignment. Thank you.